I go on to say, however, however, the answer above that we just read appears to take a step further by stating, and let me quote it again, quote, Jesus fulfilled the law, therefore there is no longer any need to continue with the old rituals, end quote. That's their statement, not mine. And I think that statement is reflective of your standard Christian positions on the law of Moses. Why do we need to keep doing the law of Moses anymore when Jesus clearly demonstrated that his way was superior and that law and grace can't mix, right? We know that legalism and grace don't mix, but can law and grace mix, right? These are some of the questions that we entertain as Christians. And unfortunately for people like me, people who are uh, championing a law uh, a lawful gospel, right? Not a law-free, but a lawful gospel. Uh, unfortunately for people like me, uh, the standard Christian answer doesn't leave room for um, law and grace to go exist. I go on to say, aren't they, speaking of gotquestions.org, aren't they implying that Gentile Christians are free to dispense with Jewish-looking commandments? And I've got Jewish-looking commandments in, in quotes there because that's the way that most Christians interpret uh, commandments like Sabbath, kosher, seat seat wearing, uh, mezuzah hanging, uh, circumcision, uh, festival keeping. These laws make you look like a Jew, even if you're a Gentile. And that's why I put them in quotes, because I think that they are not designed to make you look like Jews. They're designed to make you look like a covenant member, but that's a different sermon for a different day. So I continue. And so indeed, um, they recommend that saved Jews leave Judaism, viz. Jewish culture for Christianity as well. And I put that as a question. I mean, is that really what they're implying? Um, historic Christianity has done that, right? Down through the ages, they've asked uh, Jewish people to uh, leave their Judaism behind and embrace this new religion known as Christianity um, because Judaism and Christianity are incompatible with one another in the eyes of many historic Christians. Now, I know modern day Christians, a lot of them are rejecting that historic um, perspective and, uh, you know, thank God for that. Let's continue. Uh, let me finish reading this paragraph because it looks like I will be able to finish this tonight. Um, I go on to say, by the way, the reason I keep referring to Judaism as, quote, Jewish culture, end quote, and not merely as a religion, you ready for this? It's because my understanding of Judaism as a way of life does not neatly compartmentalize the cultural aspect of of Torah keeping into religious activities, okay, following along with me so far, while defining the secular activities as non-Jewish. So in my understanding, in the lifestyle that's uh, described by a religious Jew, the line between secular and religious is, is essentially blurred to the point that really every action performed by a religious Jew, at least the ultra-Orthodox, you know, the fervent religious ones, um, what they're seeking to do is take every day and every activity and turn it into a religious activity, one that's done for the sake of Hashem, one that's done for the sake of righteousness, etc., etc., so that there's no room in their life for what we might label as secular. Even something as we might label mundane as you know, using the restroom, using the toilet, right? Going to the bathroom. In religious Judaism, it incurs a blessing to God for allowing all of my organs to function the way that they're properly uh, created to function, right? Indeed, if they didn't function correctly, then there'd be serious health problems. So even something as mundane as, you know, going to the bathroom suddenly receives a blessing, a, a prayer that you pray after uh, you go to the bathroom. So that's why I mean by secular and religious activities and things like that. I, I ask, are you following me? I think after my little bathroom example there, you should be following along with me. Let me conclude this uh, particular section. It will be ready next week for um, the example from Pastor John MacArthur. So in conclusion to this section on gotquestions.org, uh, I simply say, in other words, religious Jews believe and live as if every waking moment is an act of Torah submissiveness. That's really their mindset. Um, and that's why there's really no separation between Jewish lifestyle and and uh, Torah keeping and things like that. They're all bound up together. My final sentence is this. Thus, to tell a religious Jew to stop keeping Torah, it's tantamount to telling him to stop breathing.
Yeah, it's basically that serious for religious Jews. Uh, stop living. Stop breathing, right? Stop living as a Jew. Uh, stop keeping Torah. Well, every waking moment is a, a moment to keep Torah. So if you tell me to stop keeping Torah, you're telling me to die, basically. And that's why when religious Jews turned to Yeshua and embraced Jesus, many of those who um, know the person who becomes a Messianic Jew treat him as dead. He has died to our religion. He has died to our people group. He has died to our culture. He's embraced a new religion and a new culture. And that'll do it for uh, the example from gotquestions.org. Uh, and that'll do it for our study on Matthew 9, 14 through 17, Judaism v. Christianity.